Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV network. I want to show you from the scripture what it truly means to live in the Spirit, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Humbly I stand and offering with open hands, Lord, I bring everything and nothing less, my best, my own. You deserve my every breath, my life, my song. I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all. Oh, I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender. You are a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. You are a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. First, I want to talk to you about your physical being, your body. 
Now, I want you to notice that in Scripture, we see physical descriptions of the Son, we see physical descriptions of the Father, but rarely do we catch glimpses of the physical description of the Holy Spirit. He's true to His humble nature. Though He inspired the Scriptures, though He Himself inspired every single word, He stays true to His humble nature by pointing instead to Christ. John chapter 16, verse 14 tells us that the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus. So He points to the Son. However, if you study the Scripture, you will notice that there are certain glimpses that we get of the Holy Spirit. He is the man of fire in Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. He's the dove who descends upon Jesus. One of the references to that is Luke chapter 3, verse 22. He's seen as a fire and felt like a wind in Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Now, every time the Holy Spirit seemed to show up in physical form, he vanished relatively quickly. His only lingering tangibility was the ones he moved upon. In other words, when the Holy Spirit would show up on the scene, people who caught glimpses of him would only capture that glimpse for a moment. And then that visualization, that manifestation of his being would disappear. And the only thing that was left from that encounter was the person that the Holy Spirit graced or empowered. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, we see the Bible says this, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. So the physical body is the Holy Spirit's vehicle to move within this world and to operate within this world. The Holy Spirit's physical body is you. You are the carrier of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the physical body is not evil unto itself. It is not itself something that is sinful unless you make your physical body operate under sin through the decisions that you make. The physical body can be a carrier of the glory of God and can be God's holy presence within the earth. Your physical being is how you interact with the world around you. Your senses give you the experience of the world in which you exist. So the physical body is your earth suit, your means of interacting with the world around you. And then we see the soul. The soul is the realm of decision, the neutral ground. It's the mind, the will, emotions, your personality. It's your mind, what you think. It's your will, what you desire, your emotions, what you feel, your personality, how you behave. Now, Everybody has a soul. Every living human being has a soul. The wicked have souls. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 10 says, The soul of the wicked desireth evil. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. The godly have souls. The scripture says in 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Every human being has a soul. Job chapter 12 verse 10 says, In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. So the body is your physical vehicle. It's how you interact with the world around you. The soul is the neutral ground. It's how you make your decisions. It's how you manifest your personality. It's where you feel and think. And once again, it is the neutral ground, the realm of decision. Now the spirit is your connection with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10-12 through 12 says this, But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given to us. In other words... God's Holy Spirit, who knows His mind, His will, His nature, His power, communicates with your spirit, revealing everything there is to know about God. So the Holy Spirit, who is eternal and all-knowing and who knows the mind of God and the will of God, reveals that to your spirit. So the part of you that is complete is your spirit. In your spirit, you know God. In your spirit, you are complete. In your spirit, you have all things. In your spirit, you are perfected. Why? Because you are connected with the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So you are already one with God. 
You belong to him, he belongs to you. You have perfect fellowship, perfect union. And it is out of that perfect union that we live. So the believer is not fighting to connect with God. Rather, the believer is looking to let that connection bring about the manifestation of godly things in their lives. In other words, I don't pray to connect with God. I pray from connection with God. I don't worship to connect with God. I worship from connection with God. I don't read the word to connect with God. I understand the word because of my oneness with God. It is out of that oneness that my, my spiritual life flows. It is out of that oneness that I have my spiritual being. So the body... The earth suit, your connection with the world around you. Your soul, the neutral ground, the realm of decision. Your spirit is that perfect union with God. 24-7, whether you realize it or not, you're communing with the Father right now. You're connected with Him right now. Therefore, all spirituality can be attributed to how you respond to that physical being and how you live in that reality. Now, I want to show you a portion of Scripture here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1-5. through once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1-5. through 5. Now, I want you to think about what the Scripture is saying here. Before you were born again, your spirit was dead. Before you were born again, you had no connection with God. I didn't, I didn't choose God. God chose me. I was dead in my sin. I had no desire to be drawn to Him. Everyone who's ever been saved has been drawn by the Holy Spirit of God. Before you were saved, you functioned from the body and the soul. There was no spirit. So your decisions were based upon your physical cravings, lust, and desire. Your decisions were based upon your soul, your mindsets, your culture, your philosophies, your emotions, your selfishness. You live from the outer layers of who you are rather than the innermost being, which is your spirit. You lived from the physical being. You lived from the soul. This is why some of you were very emotional, up and down, inconsistent, and living a chaotic life. But now that I've been brought to life by the spirit, now that you've been brought to life by the spirit, your spirit has been brought to life, and your connection with God has been restored. You had no spirit. You were dead. You were existing but not living. You were living out of the outer shells of who you really are. You were on your way to hell. The soul and body were. Look at this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Think about that. Jesus there did not mention the spirit. Why? Because only bodies and souls are destroyed in hell. Those who are alive in the spirit are not sent to hell. We're destined for heaven. So before you were born again, it was just body and soul. And it was out of those natures that you lived. It was out of those natures that you perceived all things. It was out of those nature, natures that, that you sought after those things which you desired in those natures. Now, John chapter 3, verses 5 through 7 tells us about the reality in which we live now. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life. But the Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Now remember what I said, that you are connected with God. You're a body, a soul, and a spirit. Your body is your physical being. Your soul is the neutral ground, mind, will, emotions. Your spirit is already connected with God. 1 John 2, 27. You know all things. Where do you know all things? In your spirit. Do you know all things in the natural mind? No. That's why revelation is not the receiving of knowledge. Rather, it's the releasing of what you know in your spirit into the natural mind. So then, when I live in the spirit, it means I'm living out of that inner reality. When I live in the spirit, it means I'm living from that oneness with God. I'm not living to try to remake that connection. I'm not living to try to gain connection with God. Rather, the believer lives out of that oneness with God. 
For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now, I want to show you something. I want to show you a visual aid. Now, I want you to look at these three men right here. The first one represents the spirit. And then we have the soul. And then we have the body. Now, the spirit, remember, is your connection with God. The spirit is the one who knows him, the one who is connected with him, the one who already knows what God knows by the Holy Spirit. The soul is the mind, the will, emotions. This is where decisions are made. This is where the neutral ground is. And then there is the physical being. The physical being is what exists in this world. Some of us used to live from the outer man. We used to live from the physical body. Now, here is what most believers do. I want you to think about this. Most believers, when they live their lives, rather than receiving from the Spirit, most believers live facing the outer reality. We live based upon financial situation. We live based upon relationships. We live based upon circumstances and challenges in life. Here's the problem. When you live like this, you are up and down. Why? Because outer circumstances consistently change. When outer circumstances change and you're living a life facing the outer man, you change in your emotions. This is why many of you are emotional. This is why many of you feel like going to church one week, but the next week you can't commit. This is why one week you commit to the Word, and the, the next week you can't do it. This is why many of you pray for weeks at a time, only to find yourself in prayerlessness again. It's because you live facing the outward circumstances. And when I live facing the outward circumstances, whatever happens out there impacts me in here. It affects my mind. It affects my emotions. It affects my ability to exercise my will. It affects my personality. And so long as the believer is living from the outside in, then he is living cut off from the reality that the Spirit has. See, everyone has the Holy Spirit. Every believer, I should say. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Every believer has the Holy Spirit. But so long as there is love and joy and peace and patience and power and grace and holiness all within the Spirit and you're living facing the outer man, you're never going to be able to receive what God has for you. Remember, here you're complete. Here there is oneness. Here there is perfect union. It's done. That oneness is now. But because we're not living out of that oneness, we don't see the results of it. Now, when you live this way, it doesn't matter what God does in your spirit because you're not allowing Him by your will to affect you because you're living from the outside in. Now, you've been praying possibly for a breakthrough. Maybe you've been praying, God, if you would change my circumstance. God, if you would bless me financially. God, if you would give me that spouse. God, if only you did this for me, then I would begin to live in the Spirit. If only I had my own place to live, then I could devote to prayer without distraction. If only I had enough finances, then I wouldn't have to worry about anything. Then I could focus on the things of the Spirit. And we make excuses that sound legitimate to us, but in the Spirit, we know they're not real. In the Spirit, we know they're not legitimate excuses. And we say things like that, and we wait for the ideal situation to begin living in the Spirit, thinking that we have to have everything in order first. You see, we imagine that our breakthrough is going to come about through some dramatic change in outward circumstances. We think that, that once everything is perfected out there, then we'll begin to feel good in here and start committing to the things of the Spirit within us. You think that breakthrough is a dramatic transformation of outward circumstances, when in reality, breakthrough is a small internal shift. Once you begin to face the things of the Spirit, it doesn't matter what happens out here, because you've got the Spirit in here. Your circumstances out here can be up and down. Life throws you different curves. Life begins to change things around you. That which is familiar is shaken. Things on the job, things in the family, things in your relationships, things in your finances, things in your health go up and down. They change, and you can never really rely on anything that has to do with this world. But when you live like this, it doesn't matter what happens out here because you have all of the joy, the peace, and the power 
that you need right here. It doesn't matter how things might change here because you have stability in here. It doesn't matter what life may throw at you because you're living in the spirit cut off from the influence of the world. Thank you, gentlemen. So then, the Bible says in Romans chapter 7, verse 20, But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. That's Romans chapter 7, verse 20. In other words, when you make a mistake, when you sin, when you begin to live from the outer man, sure, it's you making the decision. Sure, it's you exercising willpower and causing that thing to come about. And yes, you are held responsible for the decisions that you choose. But in reality, that's not you. That outer man isn't you. That outer shell isn't you. When you act according to the old nature, you're acting according to a nature that's outside of who you really are. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 says, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. When you live from the inside out, you learn to receive from the inside out. When you live from the inside out, you learn to base your identity on the spirit and not on the exterior. When you live in the spirit, you live grounded in the reality that you already belong to God and he already belongs to you. You're already one perfect union, not something you have to work for, not something you have to beg for. It's something you have to, by faith, live in, knowing confidently that you are already one with the Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that God would reveal things to you in your life that really are a distraction, that are causing you to live in the flesh, so to speak. God, help us to face the Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving now. And I ask you, Lord, to cause them to see according to your Holy Spirit, not according to the world, not according to outer circumstances. But Lord, let us live according to that oneness with the Spirit we have within. Help us, Father, to live by the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because... I always mean it. If you'd like information how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch and join our online church today. When you join, you're going to get a free email every single week with content that's going to help you grow and it's really going to bless your life. And now to your comments. These comments come from last week's teaching titled Victorious Living. And this right here was a message of breakthrough for many of you. And I know that because we receive messages from all over the world from people who found victory in Christ after listening to this message. If you haven't watched that yet, make sure to go check that out. And while you're at it, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, click that notification bell. And if you'd like me to potentially read your comments on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. So here are the comments from last week's teaching, Victorious Living. And Gacheri writes, God bless you abundantly, Pastor David. Again, this message was for me. I felt like the world was against me and that everything I was doing didn't count. Now I know better that in all things through Christ, I am victorious. Hallelujah. The next commenter writes, yes, I am victorious. I really needed to hear these words of wisdom. I'm going through tough times. Thank you, Jesus. Mary Jane Gomez writes, thank you, David Hernandez, for this timely message. These past weeks, I've been struggling and dealing with difficulties. I'm in pain, but thankfully, God is so great that he never leaves me. He has sent one that would comfort me. Thank you for all these reminders. Indeed, God is so faithful in his promise. God bless in your ministry. May the good Lord pour into you abundantly. And the final commenter writes, this message was totally for me. I was so anxious and depressed about my tribulations, which don't seem to end. But God in his love for me spoke to my spirit through this anointed message. I'm encouraged that he has me and nothing can ever subdue me because I'm victorious in him. God bless you, pastor, and your ministry. May the Lord keep expanding his kingdom through you. 
Amen. Well, we are praying for ministry expansion. And let me tell you something that we found out about here at the ministry. I want to share something with you that is really quite disturbing. And you need to hear this. If any believer out there listening, I know this will stir your heart. I recently challenged people, and I, I went on record publicly, and I normally don't do things like this because um, I'm not necessarily political. I'm prophetic. I don't, I don't get involved with political things, but this is not a political thing. Um, recently, Netflix has aired and is now streaming. Netflix has put on their platform child pornography. No if ands, or buts. What they have put on their platform is child pornography, period. And it's wicked, it's evil, and this is how the enemy does it. Generation by generation, year by year, he slowly chips away at people's sensitivities and slowly chips away at the moral fabric of society. Now, we need to take a stand as believers. So here's the challenge I issue to believers all around the world. You need to cancel your Netflix. Cancel your Netflix account. I may get in trouble for saying this. I really don't care. We need to take a stand. Now, you may say, but Brother David, we're in the world, not of the world. We all live in and do things that can contribute to something evil. Like, for example, if you own a car, if you're watching this on your phone or on a computer, obviously, the computer company you bought that from probably doesn't fund the gospel. They probably fund wicked agendas. But there's a difference between a company that funds wicked things with their profits and a company that exists to create and publish filth. When you give your finances to Netflix, you are giving them more power and you are giving them more means to create filth like what they're airing right now or streaming, I should say, I should say on Netflix. I've heard people try to excuse what's on that platform. I've heard them try to say it's art. I've heard them try to say it's not that bad. It doesn't matter. What they have on that platform is wicked. It's demonic. And we as the body of Christ need to take a stand against such things for the protection of those children. This cannot become a normal thing in our society. That is my challenge to you. I want to challenge you to cancel your Netflix subscription if you have one and instead partner with our ministry. Now you may say, Brother David, I don't have a Netflix account. I've never had one. I never will. Good. We still need your support. What we need to do is fight back. What we need is an army of supporters who are sick and tired of the darkness in this world, who are sick and tired of Hollywood and ungodly organizations push pushing wickedness on this generation. You and I need to stand together, and I'm looking for an army of believers who will stand with us and back and support the gospel message. This ministry needs your financial support to continue spreading the gospel through media and events and the Holy Spirit School online. All of it we give away for free. Help us to permeate the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. My challenge to you today, if you have a Netflix account, cancel it right now. Don't fund filth, fund the gospel. If you don't have a Netflix account, find a way to support this ministry because we need to push back against the darkness. Look, I understand that the world is going to get darker and darker, but that doesn't mean that we should give up on the gospel. We are supposed to be that bright light. Help us be that light in a dark world. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate right now and give a one-time gift. Give a one-time gift to help support everything that's going on or partner with us, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to sign up for a monthly donation that will automatically go toward our ministry every month. I promise you this, it will be worth the sacrifice that you have to make knowing that you're investing in souls. So stand with us today. Be a part of our army of supporters from all around the world. Stand with us as we spread the gospel. Again, one-time gifts. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. If you'd like to become a partner with us, Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. And while you're there, check out all of the wonderful benefits that you will get when you become a partner, including access to our exclusive partner Zoom calls. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. This message was taken from my latest book, Praying in the Holy Spirit. Order now at Amazon.com. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.